Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi washabihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah, we still continuing with our growth model GROWTH, all right? And now we are talking about tactics and tools and I've explained to you in detail how as Muslim we can understand that we can have local of control for ourselves that means we can have an internal local of control because Allah created us as his vice children of Khalifa, Khalifa on this earth and we have this internalization of knowing who we are why we are on this earth and what are we supposed to do on this earth so if we have this external local of control which a lot of people are being drawn because of the blame game uh, for example uh, they have this thoughts, emotion and feelings that is revolving along the idea that oh, somebody hurt me, I, I'm angry with that person or somebody jilted me or somebody cheat me or somebody so everything is external to the local environment so when you have this external local control you'll be helpless, you'll be somebody who is going to be a failure in life but Allah has ordained upon us to be his Khalifa what is his Khalifa? his vicegerent on earth and when we have this vicegerent on earth we have full control of our life in so far as what we should do using our free will as given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can shape our thoughts our emotion and feelings to be positive so in every situation even though it's negative situation we can it to be positive huh? by ensuring that we pick up the good thoughts emotion and feelings using our holistic integrated self huh? so I'm going to give you some more tools. So we have other tools. Eh? For example, root cause analysis, eh? 5Y. Eh? There's a lot in, uh, in consulting work. We do a lot of consulting work. For example, I used to do consulting work in the factory and so on. So always when we have a production problem or situational problem or human resource problem, we always go back to this root cause analysis. We call it 5Y. All right? And this is to give us an internal control over our life. Huh? So everything that we do, we should find what is the cause of our current predicament. What are the situations that we are facing and how to turn it around in such a way that it becomes positive. So this root cause analysis is you ask the first why, the second why, the third why. And normally by the third why, you'll already know the solution to your problem. And maybe sometimes you need four why. But by the fifth why, definitely you know what are the root cause of your challenges okay so we use this very often in our industrial consulting but this is a very simple uh, qcc tool quality control circle tools which uh, we teach to every uh, person in the factory so this is a very good tool in terms of human resource development which we can introduce in psychology simon sinek start with why all right why so everything that we do must begin with why all right and every challenges that we face in this world must start with why and every solution that we want to uh, achieve must start with why also so this five why can be implemented practically quite easily taking any challenges in life any situation in life whether it is a, a family problem whether it's a schooling problem whether it is a industrial problem whether it's a job related problem career development problem and so on so for example we can take say for example take a call uh, 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 example okay uh, i'm failing in my exam so you are coaching uh, all right uh, uh, a 16 years old boy he is failing his exam all right so fail in exam so the first case is fail exam huh? all right so then when you are doing your coaching using our method as I explained to you S-T-E-R-M you can ask uh, Ahmad uh, the boy the hypothetical case Ahmad uh, why what, what do you think why do you fail in your exam so uh, sometimes Ahmad will try to get bit around the bush oh I have no time or my family is poor or whatever other things or oh, my friend always asks me out to drink every evening so uh, or I watch too much TV or I'm always on Instagram I'm also on Facebook so all this why can come out but when you ask Ahmad why he's failing in exam you are very specific to the first why alright so the first why which you can negotiate with the person 
it need not be a fixed and firm rule uh, because this why is just exploratory you are not saying he is wrong or he is right never never condemn a person for example all right uh, the first why could be uh, why i'm failing my exam is because uh, i did not study all right so i did not study study okay so then you can come to the second why why you did not study ah, this is where you have many many issues lah. oh you know uh, I don't have the money to buy the textbook so if that is the real case then you as a coach you can help him to buy the textbook but now there's so much material on YouTube hardly you don't need any textbook but why for example I did not study because my friends is always asking me out and I cannot uh, reject their call so going out going out nah? every night all right you know young people uh, they will go and gang up spend three four hours chit chatting wasting their time or some of them are on more serious thing like drug dealing and whatever it is or going to party or doing uh, many many risky things young people used to do because at that time their hormonal challenges is coming through so going out every night so you can see that I did not study because I'm going out so why that why does you go out every night so then here at this point he had he Ahmad has to make a decision all right I know I, I did not study I know I failed my exam so you know you failed the exam you know you did not study then you're going out every night so your root cause is going out every night so instead of cutting out why not you just go out all right for on Saturday and Sunday but every other day you put two or three hours to your studies all right so when you are going to why number three is you shape this behavior pattern this habit that is destructive to become more a balance huh? we are not saying that you don't go out with your friends because if as a 16 year old boy you have your circle of friends I mean I have gone through my youth we like to fool around we like to do things all right and uh, those days they are not harmful but still you know we go to the uh, roadside stall and have a drink uh, you know tea and or coffee and whatever and chit chat about our lives all right but it go through we go on our scooter or on our little motorbike and then you know it's just fun but that is not going to give you uh, the success so going out every night why number three is to say okay can we Ahmad negotiate that we go only say two times a week two times a week okay then you have so you did not study you don't have no time here right here now you are giving them the option to have time all right so why number four is very important why you need to study all right why you need to study you fail your exam your parents are worried you also worry about your career your future so you want to change all right so when you want to change you are giving some cognizant of the failure in the exams and your future in terms of your career in terms of your job in terms of your uh, ability to earn a decent income and so on so this is where you do the future planning why number four eh? future planning you plan for him a routine all right okay that he can have two to three hours of homework every day and then you as a coachy coach him in certain subjects he is weak for example he is weak in physics then you get a friend who is strong in physics to coach him uh, so every monday night we sit down together and discuss uh, your physics paper for your a level or whatever it is all right so by then you have already resolved this problem uh, but all of them start with why number one why number two why number three why number four and why number five is basically uh, he or she may feel that I want success in life success in life so from this little tactic or note you can understand why this is a very powerful method uh, in terms of root cause analysis combine it with my other tools and techniques I've given to you you'll understand that you can use it for many many cases all right for example it can be a family cases for example uh, a, a uh, a, a woman come to you and say I hate my husband it is a all right hate husband okay why does it so why number one why does you hate your husband 
oh he is very rough with me all right he, he is not loving he's not caring all right so then you can ask why he's not loving or caring maybe it is a two-way street are you loving and caring to him huh? or is he so busy with his stress of work that he has no time for you now because he's going through a very severe period in, in life where he has to face the challenges of earning a living all right so you question internally and then then you try to a uh, breakthrough with why number three okay do you still love your husband yes you love your husband and how are you both of you going to work out uh, on overcoming the challenges okay and then you have your solution for future planning at number four and number five your success in life as a family so you can use this methodology for any situation all right for example i used to do in my industrial consulting okay why is the production line not not uh, performing to standard okay oh the, the employee are not trained so why are not they're not trained because there's there's no trainer so what you do you bring in a trainer all right and then train them up and then success in the production line to achieve the standard that we have the productivity quality and so on so it's it's very generic but a very powerful tool in everything in your life you always ask why first all right when you see the why then ask the second why when you understand the second why then you ask the third why and at the fourth why you already know roughly how to overcome the situation and finally at the fifth why you know that that is a future direction that you want to mold yourself remember this is not hard and fast rule eh? but this is a tool five why root cause analysis which is used by many trainers okay many coach but it's to elucidate from you your internal thinking faculties all right and as mentioned earlier on we are created by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be his vice children and allah has ordained upon this human humanity human beings lakat karamna bani adam allah elevate and give the highest status to the children of adam so we have the free will to exercise and question our decision and this questioning start with why and when we are able to apply that to transform ourselves we will be able to understand that a lot of the thought emotions and feelings that we have are not cognizant to our future as a successful good human being as a muslim our role here is to make this world good uh, to be the caliph of allah to be the vice president of god on this earth we have to strive to make ourselves good good at every level all right we are not saying that theoretically you become a millionaire or you become a great a scientist or what, but good in the sense that you lead a good life pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pleasing to yourself and then you get the fullness or the barakah of life you can be a simple clerk in an office you can be even a simple taxi driver but that doesn't uh, remove your sense of purpose and meaning as Muslims that's why five times a day we Muslims has the opportunity to reflect to be mindful of who to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after our prayer we do a short dua of what we want to achieve in our life in whatever measure that is possible for us all right for example if I am now doing a life coach training out of my experience in consulting all right I'm giving this back to, to society so that is how uh, maybe my role to help uh, young people especially within the mosque uh, community center and so on to find a purpose and meaning but remember we have the most mindful aspect of life in islam five times a day we sit down and pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we ask for his gratitude uh, we ask we are full of gratitude for the life he has given us for the opportunities that he has given us and then we ask why we have uh, we do certain things and how we can change by going through this whole understanding of the five why inshallah so remember always as muslims we must be here to transform the world to make the world a better place for every everybody we should not be parochial eh? remember we see we see some muslims who are so narrow-minded all right it's either or they or them or hell or heaven no we are in a global society we must portray the best and the most beautiful aspect of the psychology of islam and the psychology of islam is that we are the vicegerent of god on this earth we are supposed to strive to make ourselves good help others to be good at make this world good and pleasing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all his goodly creatures on this earth all humanity all life creatures even the mineral kingdom so that we can live in peace uh, returning to allah in the state of iman islamic islam inshallah